Good evening all and welcome to this our office of evening prayer. As we start this week and the end of the first day of this week, we thank God for his love. We thank God for his grace and his faithfulness as he has carried us this past day. And so in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips, that we may glorify and praise your name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We are on page 55 in our plea books. Please do join me in saying the following paragraph together. Come bless the Lord. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. You who by night stand in the house of our God, Lift up your hands towards the holy place and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And so, dear friends, we come to this part of our service where we are asked to call to mind our sins and to confess them. And so let's take a moment just to reflect on our past day and bring all those things that will challenge us and trouble us before God and lay it at God's feet. We confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Our appointed psalms for this evening is are oh, Psalms four and six, and it can be found on page six hundred and nine in our pre books. Psalm four and Psalm six. Answer me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. When I was hard-pressed, you set me free. Be gracious to me now and hear my prayer. Sons of men, how long will you turn my glory to my shame? How long will you love what is worthless and seek after lies? Know that the Lord has shown me his wonderful kindness. When I call to the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble and do no sin. Commune with me your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices that are right and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, who will show us any good? 
The light of your countenance, O Lord, has gone from us. Yet you have given my heart more gladness than they when this corn and wine and oil increase. In peace I will lie down my head. I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Psalm 6. O Lord, rebuke me not in your indignation, nor chasten me in your fierce displeasure. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my very bones are afraid. My soul also is greatly troubled, and you, Lord, how long will you delay? Turn again, O Lord, and deliver my soul. O save me for your mercy's sake, for in death no man remembers you, and no one can give you thanks from the grave. I am wearied with my groaning. Every night I drown my bed with weeping, and water my couch with my tears. My eyes waste away for sorrow. They grow dim because of all my enemies. Away from me all you that do evil, for the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will receive my prayer. All my enemies shall be put to shame and greatly dismayed. They will turn back and be confounded in a moment. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our lesson is written in John chapter 18, and I read from verse 15 to verse 25. John chapter 18, reading from verse 15 to verse 25. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus because this disciple was known to the high priest he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple who was known to the high priest came back, spoke to the girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You are not one of his disciples, are you? The girl, the girl at the door asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with him, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple, where all the Jews came together, I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. And when Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby struck him in the face. Is this your way you answer the high priest, he demanded? If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Annas sent to him, still bound to CFS, the high priest. As Simon Peter stood warming himself, he was asked, you aren't you are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. Here ends the lesson.
I love the story of Peter. I love John's account because John tells us about Peter who was formerly zealous. Peter the man. Peter the brave. Peter the protector. Peter was now lying to save his own skin. John contrasted so beautiful with Jesus who was unafraid to speak the truth about himself. John then goes further and describes how Jesus suffered the weight of the consequences of telling the truth. He is questioned, he is mocked, and then he is bound like an animal. And yet when Peter denies Jesus for the third time, John doesn't include Peter's running off in tears and weeping. And as I read the account, I realize just how more gracious John is of Peter. And it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Because that's exactly the way it is with us. Because sometimes the greatest battle we often face often has less to do with anyone's opinion of us, but instead with our own convictions and whether or not we are able to, make, to remain true to them. John has grace in this whole proce process because he sees what it costs what it cost Jesus to tell the truth. To declare who you are in the face of those who actively oppose you. It's most probably the hardest thing to do in the world. And I guess many of us have found ourselves in that situation. And through shame and guilt, we are pained for we have not stood for what is right or what is expected of us. And John most probably understands that more than anyone why Peter cracked under pressure. But John also knows what is to come. Because Peter's story doesn't end with denial. Peter will have a moment when he is restored again. And so my dear friends, as we continue on this journey with Jesus and especially on Wednesday when we start our Ash Wednesday Lenten journey. And as we look at our lives, as we do introspection, there may be many areas of our lives where we are filled with guilt and shame that we become remorseful knowing that all is not lost that we have a God, a Savior who remembers us and who would want to restore us unto him may God bless you as you look deep within that you will find peace and joy knowing that our God is a loving God, a forgiving God, 
a God who always welcomes you back. Amen. The Song of Simeon on page 58. Lord, now let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and to the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. We say the baptismal creed together. I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. I believe and trust in His Son Jesus Christ who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in His Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so, Lord, we thank you for your word and for the beautiful stories of hope and comfort. We thank you, dear Lord, for your servants, for your disciples. And dear Lord, as we look at their lives, we realize that they are no different to us that very often we deny you when we don't speak up and when we don't do the things that you call us to do. Like Peter, Lord, we feel ashamed, we feel guilty, we become remorseful. And there's a move, O oh Father God, to just leave everything behind. But we thank you, Lord, that you are gracious and loving, that you reach out to us even though we don't deserve your love, that you wrap your arms around us and hold us when things are bad. So, Lord, prepare our hearts for this Lenten journey where we will look deep within and see all the sin, the wrong, all the bad habits that we have formed over this past year, that you will come and do a new cleansing work within us, that we will be children of light, that wherever we go, that we will spread your light and hope to all those who are in despair, those who are suffering, those who are ill. So come, Spirit of the living Lord, lead and guide us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Holy God, on the Mount of Transfiguration, you revealed your Son as the Christ. Transform our lives in his image. Write your law of love in our hearts and make us prophets of your shining splendor through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, 
one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Eternal God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works proceed, give your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and that free from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Lighten our darkness, Lord, and by your great mercy defend us in all perils and dangers of the night for the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for evening prayer and have a blessed evening further. Amen.